It astounds me that people who are going to buy a new stereo system or a new automobile or a refrigerator will spend a great deal of time reading the magazines, looking into the consumer reports and selecting the very best one for the money. But when it comes to their eternal souls, they flippantly say, well, everybody has their own belief, you know. When I went to university, there would be people who would ask me, you're a Christian? Yes. Your parents were Christians? Yes. Ah, oh, that explains it. You're a Christian because your parents were Christians. If they were Hindus or Muslims or Buddhists, that's what you'd be. But that's not really the question, you know. The question is, if I were able to line up all the belief systems in the world and prod them and poke them and turn them on and try them out, then what would I be? One day, a famous preacher in America, Harry Ironside, was preaching on the streets. A passerby interrupted him and said, Excuse me, sir, how do you expect an ordinary man like me to figure out the right way? There are thousands of beliefs in the world. Harry Ironside said, Sir, thousands of beliefs? I only know of two. <laughs> said the man, There's Buddhism and Confucianism and Hinduism and Islam and all the isms of Christendom. What do you mean only two beliefs? Ironside said, There are those who believe they can save themselves and those who believe they need a savior. All of the religions of the world basically tell you there's something you need to do to save yourself. But the message of Christianity is unique in this, that it proclaims to men and women a savior. There are many people who say, well, the Bible is just another holy book. They're all pretty much the same. Now, people who say that haven't done their homework. What God did for us so that we could authenticate the message of Jesus as he came into the world was before ever he came, hundreds of years before he came, to paint a portrait in words that would exactly describe him when he did come. One prophet said that he was going to be betrayed and you would assume that his betrayal would be done by his enemies. No, said another prophet, it would be his friend, his confidant. You would presume that if he was betrayed by the Jews, that he would be executed by stoning. That was the traditional form of execution by the Jews. You remember they did it with Stephen. They tried to do it with Paul. No, says another prophet, they will pierce his hands and his feet. In fact, the description of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, written about a thousand years before it happened, describes his crucifixion more than 700 years before crucifixion was invented. You would assume that if a man was to be sold for a price, according to Jewish law, a man would be sold for 50 pieces of silver. No, said the scripture. He will be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Now, isn't that an astounding fact? The very people who were trying to disprove his messiahship knew that scripture. And all they had to do to disqualify him from being the messiah was pay 31 pieces of silver and he wouldn't have been the messiah. And they paid 30 pieces of silver and sealed the amount of money in the public record. Where would the messiah be born? Where would he come from? Matthew quotes, first of all, that Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, Judah. So said Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, perhaps 750, 800 years before the Lord Jesus came, Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, Judah. You arrange the town you're born in. You try to arrange the family you're born to. I suggest it would be a bit tough to do. But you see, that's not the extent of it, because as I pointed out, it was those who did not want him to look like the Messiah who paid the 30 pieces of silver and who authenticated his Messiahship by that. I've given you fulfilled prophecies. There are over 300 of them. Now, my friend, you've got to do something with that. You can ignore it. 
But if you examine the Word of God, you will discover that unlike any other religion in the world, God has taken your brain seriously and he has given you hard evidence to believe that Jesus has proven himself to be the Messiah, the Son of God, and declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. Christianity is the only belief system in the world that gives you evidence in history to authenticate its truthfulness. But there's more. Some people think that if they do good in certain situations, that they will get a credit with God to overcome the bad things they've done. Some people say, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. Listen, you don't even come up to your own standards, let alone God's. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, in other words, by seeking to live a good life and keep the Ten Commandments, live by the golden rule, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Everybody falls short of God's standard. No matter how wicked a sinner you are, no matter how good you think you are, God has made an offer to the human race. To those who find the way barred, because their own sin and failure has kept them from meeting God's standard, there is an alternative. It is the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all those who believe, for all have sinned. Christianity is the only belief system in the world that lets you be honest with God about your sin. You ask someone who's trying to get to heaven by the good works, how are you doing? Oh, not bad. Oh, really? <laughs> not bad, huh? Oh, doing pretty good. Doing my best. Oh, you are. I've never met anybody who does their best, even by their own standards. God doesn't ask you to pretend you're okay. He wants you to be honest with him. Now listen carefully. And you may not believe me at first, but it's true. Christianity is the only belief system in the world that offers a savior. Islam doesn't offer a savior. Islam says save yourself. It's a do-it-yourself religion. And all the religions of the world fall under the same category. You do it, and if you do it well enough, you'll get to heaven. And as long as you think you can save yourself, any religion will do. But when you find out you need a savior, the list is very short. There's only one, and his name is Jesus. Now, save yourself is an absolutely ludicrous statement. If you're in a burning building and you're screaming out the window, help, save me, save me, and I'm walking by and I say, ah, oh, save yourself. <laughs> Listen, if you can save yourself, you don't need to be saved. You can't save yourself. When Christ died on the cross, he paid the debt you owed. And in exchange for your sin, taking your sin, he has offered you his rightness, his righteousness as a gift. A free exchange. Salvation is not something you earn. Salvation is a gift. Every other religion ultimately says that when you stand before God, you're desperately hoping that he's going to uh, fudge a bit to let you into heaven. There's no follower of any religion that says, when I stand before God someday, I'm going to say to him, okay, God, here's your challenge. Put my life up on this side, put your law on that side, and I challenge you to find one thing wrong with my life. Is that what people are going to say? No, no. They're hoping against hope that somehow they're going to slip in, maybe in the top half percent, you know? Maybe they're going to get in if God won't be too careful at looking at their life. However, can I expect to get into heaven? Oh, says God, here's what we'll do. I'll account your debt to my son. He'll pay it in full. So God sets the standard. God hands over the bill, and then he pays it himself. Examine the evidence. Not only the evidence in the Bible, the evidence in your own heart that you're a sinner and you need a savior, and you can't save yourself. 
and then read what the Bible has to say about the Lord Jesus, the Savior of sinners, he came to save you. And if you will, as the Bible declares, be honest with God about your sin. That's what the Bible calls repentance. And receive the Lord Jesus as the Savior of sinners. Say, oh God, I don't know why you'd want me. I'm damaged goods. But you said that whoever came to you, you would in no wise cast out. Take me now. Save me now. I give up. I'll accept the gift of God, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.